All right, so we're talking about section 9.1 here. This is translations and vectors. Uh, so we got to introduce a lot of vocab here, but the actual idea is pretty straightforward. Um, the idea is simply moving something around, right? So for example, the idea of translating this title is I can pick it up and move it. And what I'm doing right now is translating something. I am taking it from one spot. I'm not flipping it, I'm not rotating it, I'm not changing its size, and I'm just sliding it up or down, left or right. That is a translation. So that's, in terms of content, that's what we're talking about. But I'm gonna actually introduce a lot of vocab here. That's why this video will be a little long. So the first thing is this whole idea, this chapter um, is kind of, in general, transformations, but more specifically, uh, isometries or in other words, congruence transformations. Those mean the same thing. And what that means is it's a way of moving or transforming a shape that then keeps all the sides and angles the same. In other words, it moves or changes a shape, but the original shape and the end result are exactly the same. So if I take this title and I move it, Wherever I put it, it's the exact same title as when it was over here. It's the exact same as over here. All the size, the measure, the angles, everything about it's exactly the same. That's what an isometry or a congruence transformation is. Okay. Another big important piece of vocab here is the image and pre-image. So the image is what happens after. It's the end result. And the pre-image is the original figure. So... We start with a pre-image, that's just, you know, whatever shape on a coordinate plane, a triangle, trapezoid, just a bunch of points connected, so some polygon. And then we do some transformation with it. Today we're talking about moving things around, translating. So we do a transformation, and at the end we get an image. That's the end result, the after. So we start with the pre-image, we do something to it, in this case we're moving it, and then we get the image. Okay, the way we signify this is our original, we labeled like normal points, single capital letters. So here's point A, point B, and point C in our pre-image. So this triangle, A, B, C, gets transformed and out comes this end result triangle or A, whoops, or A prime, B prime, and C prime. We note these um, with apostrophes, so the end image have apostrophes after them, and we call these prime, so called prime. So like A prime is an example, means A with a dash. And as you get to calculus, we'll use the same notation um, when we take derivatives. And we'll call it primes using apostrophes. Okay, so we start with a pre-image, we do something to it, and boom, we get an image. And I know that this point A prime came from the original point A. That's what that apostrophe tells me. It's the end result from something happening to A. Okay, so here we go. First of our four translations that we're talking about is, or sorry, first of four transformations is the translation. Uh, so a translation simply moves every point of a shape the same distance in the same direction. So this example here is move triangle ABC up three and write five. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get pink out here and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to take point A here and I'm going to move it up three and write five. And this is every point one at a time, right? So I'm going to take A and I'm going to go up one, two, three. I'm going to go over one, two, three, four, five. And here's my new point, which I will call A prime, signifying that it's started at A, now it's at A prime. So I know it moved in that direction. Okay, well, I'm going to do that with every point. So C is going to go up one, two, three. It's going to go right one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's C prime, and then B is going to go up one, two, three, and over one, two, three, four, five. So here's B prime. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and connect those. So I should get 
the exact same triangle. That's the idea behind an isometry. I should get the exact same triangle I started with. Now, one way to check if it's the exact same is to take this new triangle and slide it over. And look at that. It lines up, give or take a little margin of error, exactly with our original A, B, and C. But it went up one, two, three, and it went over one, two, three, four, five. So I didn't rotate it. I didn't flip it over. It didn't get stretched or distorted. It's the exact same triangle. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so there's two ways to talk about, well, I mean, I guess three, because one, we could literally say, move it up three and write five. I could tell you in English language words. That's one way. But there's really two other ways mathematically we could describe this. So one way is, uh, we call this kind of mapping. We say we start with point X, Y, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add one to each X value. So of every single point. So I took x, y, and I added 1 to the x value. And also separately, I'm going to add 2 to each y value. Okay? So again, I started with my x, y, and now I get y plus 2. So a quick example is I might start with the point 1, 5. And what would happen is that would become... And let's call this point A. Okay, that would become 1 plus 1, because, whoops, uh, parentheses, a comma, comma, and then I take the y value 5 and add 2. So this point would now become 2, comma, 7 after this transformation. And I would call that end result point A prime. So I started with my pre-image point, and then something happens, it changes, and now I get my image point. So what did happen? Well, if we add 1 to each x value, that oops, moves every point right 1, right? And if we add 2 to every y value, that moves every point up 2. Okay, so another way we could say uh, that same thing, this is literally the exact same vector, is down here. And what a vector is, if you know from physics, uh, the word means... It's got a direction and a length or strength or distance or magnitude. So in other words, um, something important about this is it doesn't matter where you start. So it doesn't matter where you start. From there, right, from wherever you started, wherever, <laughs> so from there, go, and this is our x and y, this is saying go, whoops, not up, sorry, go right, one, comma, go up, two, right? So this is saying, I'm just over here on the graph, I'm going to say, let's just say I started in this point, I'm going to go over right one, this is, you know, my x, y over here, right one and up two, so here is my vector, it looks like this. But I could have started anywhere. Let's say I started over here. I go over 1 and up 2. Start here, over 1 and up 2. Start here, over 1 and up 2. And in fact, it doesn't matter where you are. I could take any one of those and slide around. As long as I don't change its size, I don't flip it around, I don't turn it, that's always going to be over 1 and up 2. Over 1 and up 2. So that same vector anywhere. So an example of this is I could go back up to this drawing and let's look. So I'm going to take another color. Let's take uh, green, okay? So if I connect these two points, I say, look, here's my vector. My vector is, in parentheses, up three, that's my y, right five, that's my x, okay? That's my vector. And look what I can do. I can take that vector and I can say, well, what about this point? Oh, look, it moved the exact same vector. What if I move it over here? Exact same vector. So it doesn't matter if I start from point A, if I start from point B, or if I start from point C, this vector tells me how the entire shape is moving. Okay, and that's the idea is this vector tells you, take this point and go, right three up five, or sorry, right five up three, take this point, right five up three, and take this point, right, five, up, three. So it's a set of instructions. It's like, I don't care where you start, walk north, 
for one hour, right? Or walk north for one mile. So it doesn't matter if you start at your house or the school or, you know, some place in another continent, you can walk north for one hour. Well, actually, if you're close to the North Pole, that's interesting. Well, anyways, okay. Okay, so anyways, back to um, vectors in component form. One really important thing that I didn't explicitly say all that was the significance here is that these have pointy brackets. This is what signifies it's a vector, okay? It signifies a vector. And often you'll just hear it referred to as uh, component form. Uh, we call it component form because there's multiple ways to write a vector. You could draw it. You could talk about its angle, its slope. Um, so component form specifically says, I'm going to tell you the X component and the Y component. And together, this vector is a one comma two vector. So it signifies a vector. Whereas one, two is a point or a location in two dimensional space. So a point and a vector are very different things. One is pushing or transforming or moving a point from somewhere, wherever it's starting, over one and up to. And the other one is a single dot, a location in space, saying go to, boop, that red dot. You are here. Okay. So just to mention a couple things, sentences you would hear are uh, something like point A is mapped onto point A prime. So just some um, lingo, that would be the pre-image, point A, is moved, transformed, mapped. We might hear any of those phrases onto point A prime, which is now the image. So point A prime, or, you know, shown as A apostrophe, is the after image or the image, okay? Another thing that comes up is verify this is an isometry. So if you hear somebody say verify this is isometry or if that's in a problem, in other words, it's saying show that the before image and the after image are exactly the same. Isometry literally means equal measure. So it's meaning like it's the exact same thing. All the angles you'd measure, all the sides you measure, any measurement you take of the two things or corresponding measurement is the exact same. Um, now, for four sides and up, that's harder to find every angle and every side the same. But for triangles, we have a couple shortcuts, right? SAS, ASA. Um, the easiest to do so we don't have to deal with trig or measuring angles is SSS, because that way we just use the distance formula or Pythagorean theorem to find the three lengths of the sides. And that's the easiest way to check that two triangles are congruent. If the three sides are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. So we know the starting and the end triangle are the same. So it is an isometry. Okay. And finally, I just copy and pasted this in the book. Uh, the one thing to mention here is sometimes you will hear the book talk about a horizontal component or a vertical component. That's just the X and the Y of the total vector X comma Y. So the horizontal component is we're moving five to the right. The vertical component is we're moving three up and total the whole vector in component form is five comma three as shown down here. That's the whole thing. So horizontal component, just talking about the left, right, the X vertical up, down or the Y. Okay. So that's it. So let's just do, let's just do a couple problems together. So what is the image of point A after this translation? Okay, well, that, it literally tells you what to do. So for three, we just say, okay, well, I started with point two six, and I'm going to go to, I take my X and I subtract eight. I take my Y and I add four. So I end at the point negative six comma 10. My original point was A, so my new point is A prime. Okay, well, now five does it backwards. This is what is... The pre-image, oh shoot, well I know some x and y got, well, x got subtracted by 8, and then we got, uh, the y got uh, 4 added to it, and we know the end result came out to be negative 3, negative 10, so what's x and y? Well, we just go, okay, well, x minus 8 in the end was negative 3, so what was x? Whoops, not negative 8, negative 3. And so we add 8, add 8, and so we get x was 5. And then over here we get, uh, well, y plus 4 came out to be negative 10. So subtract 4, subtract 4, 
y was negative 14. And we could plug that in. We could see div 5 comma negative 14. If we subtract 8, we get negative 3. Great. And if we add 4, we would get negative 10. Hey, that came out to be where we want it. So it ended as C prime. So it must start as, whoops, not C prime, C. So just working backwards. Another way if you wanted to do it mentally is going this direction, you subtracted 8 from x. So going this way, you do the opposite, add 8 to x. That's another way short, um, kind of in your head to do it. Okay. Uh, this example is a poor example because it says go up 6 and it doesn't fit on our graph. So I will have to grab another graph to do that one um, a little later. Poor preparation. Okay, so let's name this vector um, and write it in component form. Okay, well, important is the arrowhead is telling me we're going in this direction. So we start here and end here. Well, let's see. We went over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 squares. And we went down 1, 2, 3 squares. So if we went right 7 and down 3 that means in vector form, so pointy, our x was, we added 7, right 7, so positive 7. And then we went down 3, so we went negative 3. And again, I could take that over 7, down 3, and I could put that anywhere. So I could move any point right, oh, the bell. I could move any point right 7 and down 3. It doesn't matter where in space I put this, it's staying whatever point you start at. Go right 7 and down 3. Okay, use the component form of the vector that describes the translation. Oh, so it's saying um, I start at negative 3, 6, that's P, and it's saying I'm going to P prime, which is 0, 1. So one way to write this would say I'd start at X, Y, and what did I do? To get from uh, that X to 3, I started with negative 3, and I added 3. So I could write this as x plus 3. I started with 6, and now I'm at 1. So I started with y, and I subtracted 5. Because we're not using multiplication or division. We're adding or subtracting to move our shape. But it wants it in component form of a vector. So it's saying take that same set of instructions and write it as a vector. So we'd write that as 3 comma negative 5. Okay. So from there, we could do a couple IXL problems um, really quick. There's a couple different formats you would see this in. Hold on one second as I switch over. All right, you could see a problem like this where it starts as a shape on IXL, and it says, translate this. I'll turn on my pen. Translate this 10 units left and one unit down. So let's see. 10 left, so I'm going to start with point G here, and I'm going to say, you know what, 10 left, I'm going to count from 3, subtracting 10, I'm going to negative 7, so I don't actually have to count squares, and I started at 5, and I'm going to go down 1, so there's my point, okay, F, I was at 3, so I'm going to go 10 left to negative 7, and then 1 down, there we go, and lastly, H, I was at 7, so subtracting 10, I'm at negative 3, and then I'm going down 1, so there we go. Perfect. And rather than repeating that, um, I'm going to switch it up and go to a different skill. So pause here. So L3 says do the same thing, except instead of creating a graph, find the points. So translate this shape 3 down and tell me the points. Now, notice I could use um, my pen here and say, okay, so m prime is right here. Uh, 3 down, my k prime is right here. I could move l down 1, 2, 3, and my l prime is right here. So I can draw on this graph. However, you could also just find the points that m is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, comma, Six, seven, eight. So it was six, eight. Now, if I move three down, that means changing the y value down three or minusing three. 
So that I subtract 3 from the y, and I get 6, 5. So I could just go down here and go, that's a 6, 5. Whoops, I did submit. But that's the idea for this one. Okay, one last IXL skill I will show you. This one asks you to write the transformation rule. Notice it's not in vector form, it's in the mapping form. It's saying starting at XY, I'm just, just circle this down here, starting at XY, do this set of instructions. So take each point and add some value. It could be positive or negative. Okay, so let's look at this set of instructions here. X goes from negative 4 over to 3. So that's 4 and 3, that's 7 over to the right. So the X value moves over by 7. Okay, now I don't know the Y value yet, so let's count. So X would go from negative 2, and then it would go up 1, 2 to 0, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4 to 4. So that's up a total of 6. Great, that's right. And so again, that's what you're going to be working on. The concept, pretty easy that you're taking something and just sliding it left or right, up or down. Really what you're going to be practicing a lot today is um, vocab, vectors, component form, translation, isometry. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck.